In the previous episode of Tiger Country, I took you into various territories of Bandavgarh National Park and brought you a handful of different tigers. Their lineage and the lengths that some of them go to in order to ensure their survival. This time for the series finale, we'll venture back into Bandavgarh and spend time with a few young tigers that will inherit this wild kingdom. Oh gosh, there was a snake and she just got started. Stick around for the entire episode because we're going to experience a little more magic that the jungles of central India have to offer. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenneth Lawrence and this is the concluding episode of Tiger Country, a wildlife series based entirely in Madhya Pradesh. In this finale episode, we'll explore a few more territories and witness the next generation of Bengal tigers in the making. Joining me once again on safari is my wife Akshita, who will be filming some of the behind the scenes. Before we begin the episode, special thanks to one of India's leading responsible safari companies, Pagdandi Safaris, for co-producing this series and hosting us at Treehouse Hideaway, a luxury safari eco-lodge tucked beautifully in the treetops of Bandavgarh. The property has its resident species of birds, reptiles and mammals residing in and around the surrounding canopies. The hideaways are named after the trees which they are built on and you can choose to spend time within the intimacy of your rooms up above. With the rustic elegance of the interiors complementing the beauty of the outside world, the treehouse hideaway blends harmoniously with nature. We were amongst the first cars to enter the park. It was a long way until sunrise and we utilized that time by driving to Dottie's territory. Over well, here we have langurs eating in the treetop and dropping leaves. If you saw the Pench episode, then you know that these guys are messy, messy eaters. Minutes after we entered Dottie's territory, we saw movement off the road. There's a tiger somewhere in the dry bamboo thicket. This young female is one of Dottie's four cubs. Her eyes radiated the golden morning sun. Her smaller stature became more evident when she came close to us. At approximately 16 months old at the time of filming, she looked more like an overgrown bobcat. We barely had a few seconds with her before she disappeared into the jungle again. So a short while ago, we just saw one of Dottie's cubs and Dottie is the same tigress that has four young girls. This one is one of the youngest that I've seen or perhaps is the youngest. 
there was a second tiger that was drifting through the safari vehicles. We drove to the watering hole to wait for them. As anticipated, one of the cubs came by. Her sister followed as well. We got two cubs of Dotty that just walked out. Uh, from the vegetation and now they're drinking water. You can only see the top of their backs. It is up to these young girls to do everything they can to survive and ensure the continuation of their species in the wild. Even if it means challenging each other someday. We drove to a different territory where the Dhabadol female and her sub-adult boys reside. Their estate has a stunning lakeside view. Coming here could be considered a gamble because of its long distance from the entry gate. There were no stripes in sight. Egyptian vultures circling overhead pointed at a potential hunt. They led us straight to the Dabadol female who sat far away, most likely guarding her prized kill from other hungry stomachs. There was no pathway to approach closer. So whilst we were just driving through the forest, uh, our guide happened to spot a large amount of smoke coming from somewhere and we are just heading in that direction because it shouldn't be another forest fire and if it is, then at least we can drive back to the gate and inform uh, the forest officials. It's okay to lose one safari over losing uh, the forest, so let's go and see what happens. On closer inspection, the forest fire seemed to have been controlled. It's been an hour and a half inside and we don't have a single sighting yet. But we did get a couple of buzzards defeathering a bird. We couldn't get like a close-up, but uh, we did get some 8K footage of it. The sounds of agitated Rufus tree pies in the background meant that it was one of their own that was being defeathered. As the wild saying goes, one must die for another to survive. And right now there are some alarm calls coming from this side. That's exactly why we've stopped here. So let's see what happens. There's a jungle fowl in the background also. So far it's just been alarm calls but no sightings for us. The alarm calls dissipated and we didn't see any big cats. So on our lookout for more tigers, we've just 
passed by more areas that have had forest fires and this is on either side of our vehicle a baby red wattle lapwing was separated from its family it's all too young to learn that predators aren't the only danger here after navigating through the charred forest floor it was reunited with its parents and another nestling i'm not too sure if this is a controlled fire or if this was natural sometimes controlled fires are important because it just stops larger natural fires from uh, erupting enter ra's territory ra is another mother who also has four subadult cubs just like dotty her territory is close to one of the entry gates Many locals and passers-by enjoy direct sightings of them. It's a matter of great pride seeing your national animal living wild and free in your home state. It wasn't very easy to spot all five of them in the tall grass. We have four tigers in this one frame three partially visible and one completely hidden and this happened towards the end of our safari we were almost at the exit gate this is ra the mother of the cubs oh gosh there was a snake and she just got startled now she is looking down a little more very an experienced tiger ra knows that she must avoid snakes at any cost even if it's a non venomous rat snake another cub emerged from the greens the smallest of its siblings whenever ra makes a kill this cub is probably the last to get the lion's share after assembling all the cats took a little nap together On day 3 we explored a different side of Bandavgarh. We were on the lookout for a new mother and her three cubs. Hmm. A naturalist and guide just saw some drag marks on uh, the mud ground. and uh, that suggests a tigress with three cubs in this area made a kill but um, they have been dragged to an area that is inaccessible we may not find them but we're going to drive around and see what we can get we stumbled upon fresh bug marks elsewhere but there were still no sightings rating i see it go slightly forward there's an indian pitta really close stop 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 with the pin bag 
an indian pitta was searching for insects hidden in the fallen leaves and it had company this is a puff throated babbler also looking out for a meal much like the pitta it too wasn't having a lucky day its camouflage is quite extraordinary blending it right into the leaf litter the pitta searched elsewhere it recognized a distinct pattern in the leaves part of a cicada exoskeleton not exactly a nourishing option due to its lack of camouflage it has to be extra careful birds of prey like this crested serpent eagle could take a fancy to it it's best to move out of sight With the lack of tiger activity, I pointed my lens towards some spotted deer. Amongst the many of them feeding, this male had other plans in mind. He wants to mate, but she isn't ready for it. She already has a young one. to take care of Langur mothers and their miniatures were also having a relaxing morning You only see them on the forest floor when there are no predators around Just like the tiger cubs we previously saw these langur infants will contribute to the next generation of their own kind that's only if they stay clear of trouble so we were just shooting some langurs at the tree at the side there and then suddenly they all started getting freaked out because there is movement of either big cat tiger or leopard we've spent almost 5 hours in the jungle this morning and we haven't had a single cat sighting So this might be the first safari in the last couple of days that uh, we haven't seen a tiger. Whilst we had no big cat sightings during our morning safari, a few lucky safari goers saw one of the rarest moments you can experience in the wild. Tara and her 2-month-old cubs were sighted in another zone. At this vulnerable age, even a tiny mongoose can be a threat. A huge shout out to Suyash Keshri, a wildlife presenter, filmmaker and conservationist for sending me this priceless footage to share with you all. We finally at Dabadol and one of the boys is here. We got him walking on the dam and he's crossed over to the other side. He may look like a fully grown tiger, but he can get even bigger. with a lush green habitat scape this territory would be anybody's favorite by the time you watch this episode Both the brothers would have left their mother to establish a territory of their own. For our last and final safari that will conclude my Tiger Country series, we drove 
to yet another location to track a tiger mother called Kajri. And just like a celebrity, there was a convoy of safari vehicles eagerly trying to catch a glimpse of her. I wasn't able to get a clear shot because of the heavy foregrounding. But I followed her for whatever it was worth. Kajri drifted into the jungle. And just like that, my time in central India had come to an end. Today, more tigers live in captivity around the world than they do in the wild. If you wish to experience a tiger in real life, always vouch for a safari in the wild. This way, both the jungle and all of its inhabitants directly benefit and remain protected. Although petting zoos offer intimate experiences unlike any other, they hold many dark secrets of physical and psychological abuse. We must collectively and maturely understand that sometimes to show our love, it must be done from a distance or without any interference at all. With a little understanding, compassion and support, wildlife around the world can live the way they were intended to. Many thanks to the entire team at Pugdandi Safaris for believing in my vision of an independent wildlife series and helping me bring you diverse stories from the jungles of Pench, Kanha, Satpura and Bandavgar. With seven intimate jungle lodges in central India, and many bespoke wilderness experiences. Pagdandi Safaris presents the very best of the Indian subcontinent's wildlife and hospitality. They continuously strive to deliver unparalleled guest experiences whilst integrating the conservation of jungles across their practices and working towards benefiting the people living around their lodges, whom they strongly believe are the front runners of wildlife conservation. If you enjoyed this series, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Your support will help me continue to tell stories of the wild and connect more people with the natural world. I'll see you in another series.